Hello everyone and welcome to another Minimalist Cooking video. Today I've got a classic American dish that is always a favorite around our house, pulled pork with barbecue sauce. This dish is super easy to make and only takes one pot. So let's get started. There's only one place to begin and that is with the star of the show, the pork. Here I have one kilo, or about 2.2 pounds of pork shoulder. I've made this dish with every cut of pork you can imagine. Pork chops, pork loin, pork shoulder, pork shank. And what I found is that the pieces that have the most connective tissue and a bit of fat work the best. That's why here you can see I'm using pork shoulder. When you're picking out your piece of pork from your local grocery store or butcher shop, I highly recommend that you look for a couple of things. First, if you invest on these pieces, you'll see a nice bit of fat. It's called a fat cap. That's going to make it nice and juicy. Additionally, you're going to see that there is a lot of connective tissue running through these pieces. It might sound slightly odd, however, the cheaper and usually more gristly cut of the meat that you are using, as you can see here, there's a lot of connective tissue, the juicier and better it turns out. And the more expensive, low-fat cuts of meat, such as loin, end up being quite dry. Once we have our pork loaded into our pot, we are going to go ahead and sprinkle about three to five tablespoons of oil all over the pieces. The goal is that everything is covered just a little bit with oil so we can sear it off. To sear, we want to use the high heat setting. This is the highest heat I had on my range. Next, we're going to add two to three tablespoons of salt. We want to just sprinkle it over evenly so that everything gets a nice little bit of coverage. Go ahead and toss those pieces of pork in the oil and salt so that everything gets a nice thin layer. And don't add too much salt at this stage because we're going to add a couple of ingredients that will take care of our salt needs later. Preparing our aromatics, we have six to ten garlic cloves. I'm going to peel these as you've seen me do a few times before. Place the back of your knife over the garlic and smack with the back of your hand, making sure your fingers are curled away as to not have any accidents. This helps the garlic itself fall directly away from the wrapper very simply and easily so that you can separate the good part from the bad part. The best part is there's no need to dice. Just cut in half and set aside for later. I told you this is a really easy dish. And moving on to our next primary aromatic, we have one medium sized onion. You can use white onion, yellow onions, whatever you have on hand will work just fine. Begin by taking your onion and cutting off the tip of the non-root end. Discard the tip that you just cut off into the trash and then move on to peeling the onion. Now, normally you need to remove all of the exterior skin. However, here I had to remove the exterior skin as well as the first layer of the onion. It didn't look too appetizing to me, so I went ahead and just peeled it off. No big deal. Once you have an onion that looks similar to this, you're good to go. Switching gears for just a moment here, we want to take a second to go ahead and flip our pork. It has been searing the entire time that we've been preparing our aromatics. This looks good. This is exactly what you're looking for. You want each piece of pork to be seared on all of its exterior edges. This is going to add a tremendous amount of flavor to the dish. And be bold here. Don't worry. Even if you oversear it a little bit and get a little bit of burnt bits, it will work out in the end, so don't worry. With our meat rotated and searing still, we are going to go ahead and turn our attention back to the onion. Cut quarter to one half inch thick rounds on the onion until you get down to the base. And if you're anything like me, I don't like to waste. So once I get down to the root end, I go ahead and trim off every little bit that's left. Go ahead and discard the root end and move on. Just like the garlic, we do not need to dice these onions. This is a very simple, very rustic dish, so there's not a whole lot of chopping involved. All we need to do is go ahead and break apart the onion into its separated pieces. You want to go ahead and push them out and separate the rings. That's it. It's that simple. As I finish separating these onions off into their individual rings, I'm going to go ahead and set those aside with the garlic. Keen-eyed viewers will note that I am actually placing the chopped garlic and sliced onions into the lid of the pot that I'm going to cook with. This will save cleaning up extra dishes later on and making a larger mess than necessary. This is absolutely not lazy, it is efficient. The aromatics will set aside just a little bit longer until they're ready to be added to the dish. At this point, we need to take just another moment here to flip our pork to make sure that it's searing off evenly on all sides. It's important that we get nice even coverage for extra flavor. The next step is to build our stewing liquid. We're going to begin with three quarters of a cup white vinegar. You could use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, both work equally as well. This is what I had on hand. The vinegar will do two things while we cook with it. First, it will help dissolve a little bit of the meat fibers tenderizing the meat as it cooks. Second, the vinegar adds a very nice acidic punch to the dish, which will be balanced out with other ingredients later on. Following the vinegar, we are going to add one quarter of a cup soy sauce to our stewing liquid. 
As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is going to be one of the additional salt components that we're going to add to our stewing liquid to go ahead and balance everything out and make sure that our pork is completely seasoned. I find the flavor of soy sauce to add a nice, deep, rich flavor to the stewing liquid that I can't get any other way. This not only adds the flavor of the soy sauce, but also adds another salt component. Since I'm cooking an entire kilo of meat here, it's going to take quite a bit of salt to make sure that everything is seasoned well. And that is very, very important to the flavor of this dish. Once you've seared off your pork on all of its sides, you can add the garlic and onions into the pot. I'm always looking to add extra layers of flavor to any dish I cook. By adding the garlic and onions, and at this point, before the stewing liquid, it gives them a slight opportunity to sear in the oil with the pork and create a little bit of caramelization. This is going to add another layer of flavor and really help the dish pop. Work the onions and garlic down into the crevices of the meat and make sure to go ahead and get them well distributed in the pan. After the garlic and onions have had a few minutes to caramelize, we're going to begin the stewing liquid. Start with one to two and a half cups of cool drinking water. The amount of overall water that you will add will depend greatly on the size of your pot and how much pork you're cooking in it. You're looking to come up about halfway to three quarters up the side of the pork. I added one and a half cups of cool water and our stewing liquid, which is vinegar and soy sauce directly to the pot. After adding the water and stewing liquid, see if you need to add any additional water to come up around half to three quarters of the way to the pork. Next up, three quarters of a cup of sugar. I am actually going to be using Denver River sugar. However, brown sugar is more traditional. I do not recommend that you use white sugar in this dish. It doesn't really turn out that well. This will add quite a bit of sweetness to the meat as well as balance out the acidity from the vinegar we added earlier. The third and final source of salt in this dish will be three to four pork flavored bouillon cubes. This not only allows you to add salt to the dish, but it also allows you to add extra flavor. This may seem like we're adding quite a lot of salt to this dish between adding the table salt, the bouillon cubes, and the soy sauce. However, you really do need this much salt because it can only absorb into the meat from the outside. For the final ingredient, I have listed additional seasonings. Here, I'm going to be using a pre-packaged pork marinade mix. This minimalist hack allows you to add a multitude of different flavors, spices, and seasonings without the need to actually carry around each individual spice and seasoning. Fine tune the dish to your liking. Some suggestions are black pepper, liquid smoke, sliced apples go great, chili powder for spice, ground cumin, chipotle peppers, anything that you like. Remember, that's just you cooking. Once you've added your secret blend of seven herbs and spices into the pot, that's it, nothing else goes in. We want to bring the entire pot up to a boil and make sure all the sugar and salt and everything is dissolved well. From there, we want to reduce it to the lowest temperature setting that we have and let it cook. Your dish should look a little something like this. I know, not super appetizing right now, but it will be. Once at a boil, make sure everything is well mixed, the sugar and salt are completely dissolved before continuing on. Cover with the lid and cook for four and a half hours on the lowest setting. Yep, that's right, four and a half hours. This cooks low and slow. You can't really brush this dish or it won't turn out well. However, it is something you can easily prepare early in the day and then put on so it can cook in the background, allowing you to do other things. Thanks for the help of a little movie magic. It has been two hours. We are midway through cooking and it is time for us to flip the pork. Nothing complicated or special going on here at all. About halfway through the cooking time, you wanna go ahead and flip the pork to make sure that it gets cooked evenly, as well as give everything a nice little mix. Here you can see I'm breaking off a little piece of the pork as well to go ahead and test for seasoning. With a little more editing magic, it has been four and a half hours and we are ready to finish this dish. Four and a half hours of low, slow cooking have transformed this piece of grisly pork into a delicious meal. Take a look at this compared to earlier. That looks quite a bit better. If you found this video entertaining or helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, make sure to leave a comment, and hit that bell icon. That way you're notified every single time we release another video like this. I know four and a half hours does seem like quite a long cooking time. However, I promise you, your patience will absolutely be rewarded. The low and slow cooking method that we used is the only way that you can convert the collagen and connective tissue in the raw meat to that finger licking juicy goodness that is pulled pork. There's no way around it. You can't speed it up. 
The final steps in preparing this meal are to pull the pork apart. We are going to take a portion of the pulled pork, put it into a bowl, and use two forks to separate it. It's a simple process, however, it does take a little bit of time. The pork is so tender it almost wants to fall apart by itself. Using a couple of forks, you can easily make this pile of shredded pork in a few moments. The final step is to cover with your favorite barbecue sauce. And this is where a lot of other channels will try to tell you, hey, you should make your own barbecue sauce to put on your pork. And of course, that would be best. However, living in a minimalist kitchen, that means I can't really carry around the 15 to 20 ingredients it takes to make a nice barbecue sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and use bottle. Whether or not you're using homemade or bottled barbecue sauce, you want to add a nice, generous portion over the pulled pork and then go ahead and mix it thoroughly into the pork using your forks. You want every piece to be covered in that sweet sauce. Toss to combine fully and that's it. It is that simple guys to make this delicious dish at home in one pot. Our favorite way to eat the pulled pork is with a side of fried polenta. I've done a video on how to make fried polenta which is linked in the description below. Make sure to check that out. If you're going to make this dish, I recommend that you make leftovers. You want to make enough that you have enough for pulled pork sandwiches the following day. Any leftovers you have from dinner, simply refrigerate. The following day, shred it up, add a little bit of barbecue sauce, microwave it, and it goes phenomenally on some bread as a pulled pork sandwich. With all that delicious collagen, it's actually twice as juicy the day after. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.